Hi again, this is Steve, K8BZ. In the uh, previous lesson in the video, we uh, created a connection path to a bulletin board in Outpost Packet Message Manager. Uh, but you will find at times, especially if you're working in the field and you're using modest equipment and antennas in a portable operation providing uh, communication support in an emergency, that you may not be within range of the bulletin board that is going to be used uh, to store all the messages for the emergency network. Uh, in that case, you're going to need to use some means to reach the bulletin board to store your messages and retrieve your messages. And there are two ways to do that. Uh, and you need to know what they are and how to use them. And uh, we're going to cover the, that in this video. Now, they are called nodes or digipeters. Uh, we're going to use IP serial to first show you how to use a node and a digipeter, but the first thing I'm going to do is turn the monitor off with the M off command, so we won't be monitoring other packet activity on the frequency, it, only the activity we want to see when we're connected. Now, uh, nodes and digipeters both are used to communicate with a more distant station than you can reach directly. Uh, if you're in the field, hopefully you're in a situation where in your county um, to reach your bulletin board there's going to be some packet operators that have home stations and hopefully you'll be able to use one of those home stations to reach the, your own bulletin board. Uh, another scenario may be you're going to be on the edge of your county and you may actually be closer to the neighboring county's bulletin board or packet station than your own. And you may have a better connection path to your neighboring county's packet station. So you could use that packet station to in turn connect to your own EOC packet station uh, where your messages will be sent during this operation. Now we're going to describe digipeters first you can specify multiple digipeters in your path to connect to the bulletin board of your choice. Now we're going to show you how to do that in a dumb terminal program. Now let's say for example, uh, uh, let's do a monitor herd command and we're going to take a look at, uh, uh, I hit an extra character there, that's why you got this input ignored. We're going to look at some of the bulletin boards that are available. Uh, let's find uh, one that I'm interested in is W8DMI. There he is. Uh, that's the node actually. The bulletin board for W8DMI is dash one. Now if I try to connect to him, chances are I'm not going to be able to reach him directly. Let's give it a try. W8DMI dash one and we'll see. Now Huh. By golly, we did it. Uh, there's a band opening right now. That's a 50-50 shot, uh, being able to make a connection to that bulletin board directly. And it's probably going to be slow because there are probably going to be a lot of retries. I just did a list command even though I did not get the sign-on message yet. And it is a little bit slow. So I'm going to go ahead and send the disconnect command, which is the letter B, to the bulletin board. And, and we're disconnected. Now, if I wanted to, I could use a station that is located between my station and W8DMI to make a connection. Uh, that station would be the EOC packet station in West Branch. Uh, the call sign of that station is WB8EOC, dash 7 is the node, uh, but I only need to use the digipeter, so I don't need the supplemental station identifier. So I'm going to connect to W8DMI-1 via WB8EOC. Now it's going to send my packets to, see how much quicker that went? Now I'm going to list the messages my packets are automatically going to be sent up to the station in West Branch that's automatically going to repeat those packets and send them on to W8DMI. Now these are two, two examples of auto forwarding messages that, uh, that I sent up there. Uh, we're not going to take time to review those messages. This is just showing you how digipeters work in one sense, but I'm going to give you a, a further explanation here. In packet radio, 
in each packet that's configured to be sent, a portion of the packet is called the checksum. And that's a number that's sent in, embedded in the packet. When the, when the packet is received at the destination station, it's going to calculate what the checksum number should be based on the content of the packet, based on the information content of the packet. Then it's going to compare that number that it calculates with the actual checksum number that's sent with the packet. If those two numbers agree, it's going to send an acknowledgement back to the sending station and let it know that it received that packet and that it's ready to receive the next packet. If those two numbers do not match, then that means the receiving station detected an error and it will simply ignore the packet. It won't acknowledge it, it won't send anything back to the, to the sending station to let it know that it detected an error. The sending station, if it doesn't get the acknowledgement, is going to continue to resend that packet until it does. And it's going to send it the number of times determined by the retry command. So we're going to look at the retry command. By default in a TNC it's going to try to send that packet up to 10 times and wait to get an acknowledgement from the station that it sent that packet to. I will only get the acknowledgement if the receiving station calculates the checksum and that number agrees with the checksum that was sent embedded in the packet. Otherwise, it's going to ignore the packet. So I'm going to show you what happens if that retry is exceeded. I'm going to change the retry setting just to save time. I'm going to change that to 2. So now, retry is only 2. It's only going to retry to send a packet twice. And if that packet is not received after the second attempt, it's going to get the TNC, your own TNC is going to tell you it retried out. It exceeded the number of retries and it disconnected. Now in order to demonstrate that, I'm going to try to connect to a station that doesn't exist, W8DMII. Now there is no such station. So it's going to make two attempts to try to connect to that station. And when it's unable to do that, after a couple of attempts, that's the message you're going to get. Now if I'd have left that at 10, we'd have had to wait a lot longer to get that. Now, even though we were just trying to connect, it doesn't matter if we were already connected to a station and for some reason the path got busy or propagation dropped out, as soon as it exceeded the number of retries, your own TNC will disconnect you automatically. Now, that's important to understand that if you want to understand the difference between nodes and digipeters. Right now, we're just talking about digipeters. Uh, there's another station, uh, W8COP. Let me re now I'm going to leave the retries at 2 for the time being, just to save time so we don't have to wait through 10 retries. I'm going to try to connect to W8COP-1 via two digipeters, WB8EOC. That's the first digipeter that has to be used, and the second one is W8DMI. So it, w, my packet is being sent to W8EOC. That in turn is sending the packet to W8DMI. W8DMI is in turn sending the packet to W8COP bulletin board. And if it's successful, we're going to get the sign-on message, which we did, which looks good. I'm going to list messages. There are no messages. It already says. So we know that. So it's not going to return any list. Now the acknowledgement doesn't happen at the digipeters. The digipeters don't calculate a checksum and compare it with the checksum embedded in the packet. They'll just take the packet and retransmit it to either the next digipeter in the line or to the final destination. At the final destination is where that checksum is calculated. Now that uh, that gives you lots of opportunity to have that packet interfered with either by loss of propagation or uh, a packet collision with another packet station transmitting at the same time that couldn't be heard from the original station. Uh, basically it's the packet version of QRM. Uh, it's referred to as a packet collision. Uh, so with each digipeter in the path you're multiplying 
the number of ways that that packet can be lost or interfered with or uh, or false information can be detected in the packet because of a packet collision or, or QRM. Also, the length of time your TNC waits to resend the packet, if it doesn't get an acknowledgement, is multiplied by the number of digipeters in the path. So if it, let's say that packet got interfered with somewhere along the line and the receiving station didn't, didn't uh, get a match when, with the checksum comparison, it would ignore the packet. My station wouldn't resend that packet until the, the period of time went by to allow the packet to get there and the acknowledgement to get back. And each time you add a digipeter, it multiplies that another time before the retry is attempted. So the only, the only verification that the packet was received correctly is at the end point when you're using digipeters. Possibly, let's try this. W8, I'm going to try to connect to W8COP-1 via W8GD W8 GDW, WB8 EOC, and W8 D DMI. Spell it right, D <laughs> DMI. Okay, so now we're trying another connection with three digipeters in the path. Uh, and if there's propagation, the, the only iffy one is from, oh, there, it made it from W8 GDW to WB8 EOC, but it made it. Now we're going to do a list. And again, it's only going to retry twice and, and retry out. But we're doing pretty good. It made it with uh, three digipeters in the path. And we'll disconnect. Okay, now another way that a connection could be made is by using nodes. You can find nodes from the command prompt by doing NDH, node heard, nodes heard. Uh, these are nodes that uh, have been detected. I know there are other nodes that aren't on this list. They haven't been heard recently. Uh, the node uh, in West Branch is WB8EOC-7 and W8DMI-7. So we can use those same stations as nodes and not digipeters. The difference is nodes will calculate the checksum on every link in the path and it will compare it with the transmitted embedded checksum. So the retry will happen faster if there's a packet collision because there's no nodes in the chain. It's going to be acknowledged every step in the path if you're using nodes instead of digipeters. But nodes require you to connect to the node first. So we're going to connect to WBADOC-7, which is a node. Uh, the term node when it comes to packet radio is is widely misunderstood. Most people refer to any packet station as a node. Well, we put a packet node up here, we put a packet node up there. And they're using that generally just to refer to the packet station. The node is a specific function of a packet station that has to be enabled. And we went over how to enable a node back in the uh, uh, TNC command video. Uh, the node here is enabled. So we're connected to a node. We can't leave a message at a node. Uh, we can't check for messages stored in a node because nodes don't store messages. Nodes are just used to connect to other stations. So we're connected right now to the node WB8EOC-7. So we're going to connect from that to another node W8DMI-7. The dash 7 is typically the SSID that's used to connect to a node. Now the first thing it's going to tell us is it made the link and then it's going to give us the sign-on message for the next node. And again, all of these packets are being acknowledged at every step. So the packet I sent to WBADOC was acknowledged there. And when I asked that to connect to W8DMI, everything is acknowledged and that checksum comparison is done at every step along the path. Now we'll connect to W8COP-1, the bulletin board. So that connect request was sent to the first node, which sent it to the second node, which sent it to the bulletin board. That link has been made, and we got the sign-on message for the bulletin board. In general, 
a connecting via nodes, especially if you're over one digipeter in the path, and especially if there's other packet activity on the frequency, nodes are going to be faster and they're going to be more dependable than using multiple digipeters in a path. Now, currently there's not a whole lot of packet activity in this part of Michigan. There's only a very few stations on there and fortunately the ones that are on there know enough not to have beacons transmitted every couple of minutes uh, that will interfere with the attempts to connect. So connecting via a few digipeters can be pretty workable, but as soon as there's other packet activity in the area, using digipeters to connect, especially if you're going to the two to three digipeter or more length, uh, will become very slow and probably undependable. You may retry out because it will only retry up to 10 times by the default setting in your retry command before it gives up and just disconnects and tells you lost the path, we retried out and disconnected. So those are two ways to connect using digipeters and nodes. If you only need to w have one station, you might, you'll probably find digipeters are going to work fine for you. Let me disconnect. If you need to go more than one, I always use nodes and quite often I'll, I'll just use nodes all the time because I know it's going to be more dependable than using digipeters. And if you do have to send a retry packet, the, the waiting period for the retry is going to be much shorter because you're using nodes that are acknowledged at every step along the path. So I'm going to reset my retry command to 10, the default setting. And now we are going to do something else. We're going to go to Outpost Packet Message Manager and we are going to set up a connection to a bulletin board I just deleted those messages. They're down here in the Delete tab now. So we're going to go to the Setup menu and we're going to go into the Bulletin Board settings. And let me uh, let me delete uh, W8DMI. That's a bulletin board, and I'm I'm going to delete it because we're going to create a act as if this is a brand new connection. So let's say I need to make a connection to a bulletin board that's out of range, and I need to use a digipeter to connect to it. Okay, so I'm going to, just like in the previous video, I'm going to click New, I'm going to give it a friendly name, and I'm just going to use Dan's call sign, W-A-D-M-I. The connect name is going to be the bulletin board call sign, which is W-A-D-M-I-1. Uh, we're going to get our TNC, which is the KPC3. Click OK. So we're all set to go there. We, as in the previous video, we don't need to worry about props commands, initial commands, but we do need to use a digipeter in the path. Can't connect to him directly dependable, so we're going to use the digipeter WB8EOC. And we are all set. Okay, so now when I do a send receive session, it's going to connect to wb 8 dmi one via WB8EOC. There's two messages in the bulletin board and if they're not bulletins and if they're not for me I'm not going to be able to read them. And they're not so it's just going to disconnect. So we connected to this distant station. I'm in Gladwin, Michigan and that station is in Lupton. Couldn't tell you how far that is. It's probably got to be at least 40 miles I would guess. Uh, and we're right on the fringe. Sometimes we can connect directly and sometimes we can't. But we can always connect using the digipeter that's about halfway in between us. Uh, no problem at all. So that's how you would use a digipeter. Now how would we do it if it was further and we needed to use nodes? I'm going to go back into the tools menu. Uh, go down, oh, no I'm not. I'm going to go into the setup menu to bulletin boards. So we're going to set up access to a new bulletin board uh, in Outpost, but this time we're going to use nodes instead of digipeters to make the connection. So back at the bulletin board setup window, we're going to select new. We're going to put in the friendly name, which I'm just going to use the call sign, WHCOP. 
The connect name is going to be the actual call sign of the bulletin board, WHCOP-1. We could put a further description in if we wanted right here, but that's optional and I'm going to skip it. The, the only other thing in this tab we need to do is tell it we want to use our TNC that we have set up. So I'll click OK and that puts the TNC name in there that we set up. Now the prompts tab don't need to do anything just as in the previous examples. Same with the commands tab and the initial commands don't need to do anything there. Now in the path tab in the first example we did that was a direct connect to a nearby bulletin board. Then we did another one to another bulletin board via digipeters. This one is going to be a little further away so we're going to do it via a KA node. So we're going to check that option. Right now there are no nodes set up. This is zero of zero nodes set up in this path. So we need to create a new node. The node name is the call sign of the node. The first node we need to connect to is WB8EOC-7. That needs to be the actual call sign of the node. Now Outpost needs to know what message we'll receive from that node when we get a successful connection. To find that out we're going to go back to IP Serial and we actually connected to that node from our terminal program. Uh, let's see where that was. Somewhere here we'll find it. Here it is. We, from the command prompt, we just did a connect request to WB8EOC-7 and this is the response that my own TNC sent me but this is the response that came from the node so this is the one we're going to use. I'm going to highlight enough of that so Outpost will be able to recognize that we actually <coughs> connected to the node. I'm going to do a right click and copy it then we'll go back to the bulletin board setup window and I'm going to paste it there. Now it doesn't give you unlimited space. You don't need it. You just need enough of that message for Outpost to recognize it as the successful connect message. So that's enough. Uh, successfully connected uh, message. Now the connect command, the command to connect to the bulletin board is just the letter C. So we'll put the letter C in there. And we need to check this box uh, that just tells us we're going to connect with the with the node BBS name right here. The port number needs to be port 0. Uh, that's your TNC port. Now we need to know what the unsuccessful connect message. If it retries out, what message are we going to get back? Now this is the first node in the path. So if we get an unsuccessful connect message back, it's going to come from my own TNC when it exceeds the retry count for trying to connect to that bulletin board. So let's go back to IP Serial and find an example of that so we'll know what to put in there. And we did have one here somewhere. There it is. I attempted to, no that's not it, that's a successful connect. I just have to look and we'll find it. There it, is. it was after I changed the retries. Here we go. Uh, I attempted to connect from the command prompt to this mistakenly typed call sign that's not a real call sign. So my own TNC returned this message to me. Star 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 retry count exceeded in lower case. Now we need to be we need to put the right information in there because Outpost needs to see that to know that it didn't successfully connect. So we're going to copy that Go back to Outpost in the BBS setup window. The unsuccessful connect message that I copied, I'm going to paste. And again, we don't need it all. We just need enough to let Outpost recognize that that successful connection was not made. <coughs> so that's everything we need for the first node. Now there needs to be, after we connect there, we need to connect to the next node. Uh, no, we don't. Need to create another new one. There we go. Now this tells us this is the second of two nodes. Now this node name is going to be the call sign WADMI-1. Successful connect message is going to be the same as the other but we'll go back here and verify. It 
and here it is. This is where we successfully connected to the node W8DMI. So I'm going to copy that message. Copy. We'll go back here. We're going to paste that. And again, we don't need it all. That's going to be enough. The connect command, again, is the letter C. We're going to connect to the node name, which is the call sign. We're going to do it on port 0. Now, the unsuccessful connect message is not going to be quite the same. Uh, the one we looked at before came from my TNC. That's the message my TNC sends when it exceeds the retry count. Because I was not connected to a node, I was trying a direct connect to a mistakenly typed call sign. So after it exceeded the retry count, my own TNC returned that message. So uh, I can't depend on that being the correct message. So let's connect to WBADOC-7. And then uh, I need to ask it to connect to a station where I know the connection will fail. So I'm going to ask this node to connect to W8D. I know there's no W8D, so we're going to ask the node to try to connect to that call sign. Uh, the retry count for the TNC at that node is set at 10. So it's going to make 10 attempts to send a connect request uh, to that call sign. And when it's unsuccessful, it will return a message to me telling me that it was unsuccessful. And then I need to paste that message in the uh, bulletin board setup window uh, for that node in Outpost. So we just have to wait, wait this out. And it should be finished here shortly with the tenth attempt, and there it goes. It tried ten times, couldn't connect. So the retry count exceeded message we get from the bulletin board isn't the same one we get from my own TNC, which was up here. It stars with, with a lowercase retry count exceeded. Down here it's pound signs with retried out. So we're going to copy that message and go back to, and actually let me disconnect from the bulletin board before I do that so we won't stay connected. Then we'll go back to Outpost and this node, W8DMI, and that needs to be 7, not 1, W8DMI-7 the unsuccessful connect message is retried out. And again, we don't need it all. That's really all we need. So let's apply that. I'm going to go back to the path and we'll take a look at it. There's two nodes in the path. This is the first of two nodes. That's the first node it'll connect to, next, and previous. When I, If we get those in the wrong order, you can move this, use these move up and move down buttons to change them to the correct order. So if you get confused and don't put them in in the right order, you don't need to delete them and, and go re-enter them. You can just move that node up or down in the list. So if we, that's the first of two nodes. And if I click Next, that's the second of two nodes. So we're going to click Apply and OK. And then, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to do a Send Receive session. Let's take a look at what goes on here. Now we're going to connect to the first node. We got that, so now it's, as soon as it got that, Outpost is sending the connect request to the next node, W8DMI. Now we're connected to that node. Now right here it's saying from that node, connect to W8COP-1. And the link is made. So once you get it set up, this all happens automatically. And nodes are faster and more dependable than digipeters especially when you get beyond the first digipeter or node. If you have more than one, if you require more than one, I highly recommend going to the trouble to setting up the path via nodes and not digipeters. There are no messages in the bulletin board. We already got that, but it, the outpost is still going to go through the list sequence here. And then it's going to disconnect when it's all done. Now, just uh, just for a demonstration, I'm just going to send a quick bulletin 
to the test bulletin to all test and we're going to send that it's in the out tray do a send receive we're going to send it up to that node or I'm sorry up to that uh, bulletin board via two nodes made the link to the second node now it's going to connect to the bulletin board as you can see in the window as soon as it connects to the bulletin board the first thing outpost will do is send your outbound messages before it lists messages to come back to you uh, one of the reasons is is because we are, we're going to download our own bulletin as I described earlier so we can expire it when it no longer needs to be on there so it's sending the bulletin now via these nodes and each packet is, is acknowledged at each node along the path so that message was saved I did a list mine there are no messages now it's requesting a list of traffic and we already know there aren't any of those now it's going to request to list bulletins and it should find our bulletin there it is it's waiting for the rest of the input prompt there it is now it's reading message number 44 which is our bulletin and there it is we got the chime for a new message received now it's sending the disconnect command which is the letter B that has to go through two nodes since we were connected to each node individually it has to disconnect from each node individually now if we look in the in tray we'll see our bulletin our test bulletin now to get rid of it I'm gonna click expire and it's gonna prompt us to make sure we realize that's gonna delete it from the bulletin board now that doesn't delete it from outpost which resides in your computer but we want to expire it or delete it from the bulletin board so we'll do another send receive going to connect to the first node then it's going to send a connect request to the second node which is in progress now it's going to ask to that node to connect to the bulletin board and that connection was made and we'll watch as it just goes in and deletes there it is kill 44 that's the bulletin Now this is going through two relays to get to the bulletin board and the response comes back through two relays. That's why it's a little bit slower than making a direct connection. There, it deleted the message. Now it's going to go through the list sequence. List mine. List traffic. List bulletins. And there are no bulletins. So after the next input prompt it's going to send the disconnect command which is the letter B and then it will disconnect from both nodes individually because they are connected to individually there's the second one we'll go back to the command prompt and we are disconnected that session is completed so with that practice using nodes and digipeters in IP serial. Connect to various stations. You can even connect to your own station. Let me go to IP serial. I'm going to connect to my own bulletin board. You can I can connect to my own bulletin board internally just by doing CKBZ-1. Uh, that's connected directly to my terminal. Nothing is going out over the radio. That's just all internal. Okay, I'm going to send the disconnect command. Now I can also connect to my own bulletin board via a digipeter and that will go over the radio. KBZ-1, you don't need to type out via, you can just use the letter V W A G D W. Now this time it's going to connect via the digipeter and it's actually going to go over the radio. So there we are. I'm connected to my own bulletin board through a digipeter by radio. So if you can't find other packet stations in your area because there isn't that much activity yet you can still practice by sending messages to and from your own bulletin board. SB all 
test for the subject. We're prompted for the text. I hate typos. This is a test message via digi w8gdw. Another typo. W8GDW. Now you'll notice when I hit the backspace to correct those errors, actually backspaced to the previous line, but that doesn't matter. I could backspace all the way over here. It wouldn't matter once you, it's not going to change what the text of the message is. It's still going to be correct. And I'm going to end it with a slash EX on a single line. Message is saved. We'll list the messages. There's our test message. It's message number eight. I'm going to read number eight, which is the response is going to come back to me via the Digipeter connected to my own bulletin board. I'm going to kill number eight. And I'm going to disconnect. So practice using nodes and Digipeters uh, to make connections. And then practice, if you have some bulletin boards, and even if you can reach them directly, practice setting them up. Digipeters are easy. You just put the Digipeter <coughs> that you need to use in the path. Uh, and even if you can reach it directly, and you have a station you can use as a node, or even better, two stations, practice setting up a connection to a bulletin board using one, or even better, two or more nodes to get there. Two is sufficient. If you can do it via two nodes, you can do it by, by five or six. So practice using two nodes and uh, setting up a connection to a bulletin board using two nodes. Uh, you don't want to have to learn this on the fly if you're deployed. You can't depend on a direct connection to the bulletin board. You don't know where you're going to be deployed. You may even be deployed out of your area into another community in another county. Uh, maybe they have a shortage of packet operators or they need more than they can muster in their own county. I'm in Gladwin. What if I'm deployed to Saginaw? Uh, you don't want to have to learn this on the fly when you're deployed. Uh, be able to do it on your own. Take the time to do it on your own. As I said, if way back in the very early uh, first video on the introduction. If you're going to do this, it requires a commitment on the part of the operator. This is doable. It is doable by the average ham with average to low average computer skills. Uh, it just takes practice and it takes repeated practice. You can't do it once today and then a year and a half from now, if you're deployed, expect that you're going to remember it. Practice this stuff once in a while. Uh, get into Outpost, delete delete a couple of your bulletin boards and reconfigure them, especially the ones using nodes and digipeters. And again, digipeter or nodes require a little more effort than digipeters, but they will work much better. So uh, please practice that. Let me know if you have any problems or questions that I can help you with. I'd be more than happy to do it. Uh, we can do it in many ways uh, without having to travel to do it. Uh, I can telnet into your PC and I can go over it with you while, you're, while we're on the phone uh, if necessary. And I'm more than willing and uh, happy to do that if necessary. But I think you'll find if you practice these and review it periodically. Once a month you get in and delete your most difficult bulletin board and then set it up again. And uh, you'll, have, you'll have this down and it will greatly increase your knowledge of this. And before you know it, this stuff, nodes and digipeters and setting up these bulletin boards and the commands will be second nature. And uh, you'll really be one of the skilled operators that can, that can coach and mentor the uh, newcomers and uh, and really help them out and that would that would really benefit uh, uh, your local jurisdiction and talk talk to your fellow hams about this show them what you're doing on packet show them what you're doing with uh, 
outpost and emergency communications. Uh, you could spark an interest uh, and and maybe bring a few bring a few more people in. Uh, be patient with the newcomers. This can be very mysterious and very confusing, uh, but just take it in little steps, and uh, and hopefully uh, hopefully it will continue to grow and get more participants, and really be able to provide a useful service. So thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for more videos to come.